everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. Of course, I am your host, uh, D-Boss, and I'm just hoping that everybody's doing their laughing tips. The 15 is coming to the end of the year, so I hope everybody's doing their laughing tips. It's good for your blood pressure. It's good for your abs. I'm not saying stop going to the gym, but you could do that. Also, a lot of people say they don't have anybody to laugh with. You can find somebody. You can put something on. You could just, you know, just, and if to the real extreme that you can't find anybody at all, then you can sign up for laughing classes. And there's a lot of health benefits to laughing. It keeps you youthful. It keeps you going every day. You know, it just it's just something that you put out there what you're going to get back. All right, and I hope everyone's watching me on Monday to Friday. I come on at primetime night from 10, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're on Care Vision, 28 different countries, including London, UK, also Bell 5, Channel 658. And in case you missed all that, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is DBoss Networks, subscribe, share, and you can watch all the wonderful guests that I've done so far. So from one of our sponsors, we're going to hear something and we're going to be right back with our very special guests. Welcome to your vital steps to better health and fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today, we're talking about exercise snacking. It's a fantastic way to fit exercise into your busy schedule. Exercise snacking is about taking small bites of exercise throughout the day. And it could look like this, anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes of movement in some way, shape or form is an exercise snack. You can, instead of taking the elevator, take the stairs up a flight. Or you can go for a brisk walk for five minutes. If you're watching TV, you can sit down and do some stretches or sit and stand to work those legs. When you're at work, do some stretches at the desk. All of that is exercise snacking. The beauty is it does not require a membership and neither do you need equipment. So take advantage of those small pockets of time that you have throughout the day to do some form of movement. You'll feel great. I'm Joanne James, and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. See you next time. Thank you, Joanne James, for that uh, healthy snacking tip. That doesn't mean people to go out there and go get some food and start eating. Yes, you can eat healthy, but um, she's talking about getting up if you're sitting down for periods of time just to get up, do some kind of movement, walk around and stuff like yes you can eat healthy but you can also you know just move move your arms i know i'm pretty bad sometimes i'm sitting down and i realize i'm doing interviews i'm sit, i've sat down for two hours and i haven't got up so you have to just try to get up do some movement and plus now with the holidays everybody's gonna be laying around so just try to do some stuff but anyways we got a special guest here and it's all about that she's all about the jazz and all about the different kind of music and she's got a lot of different things happening. So we're gonna get up and personal and find out about her. So with no further ado, I introduce to you Faith Armour. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, how right. are you? <laughs> all right, so here at Real Life Matters, we like to know where people's cultural background and where they come from. Sure. So, um, Technically, going back a few generations, we're not sure where the name Amour came from. It is French, but our family is from Guyana, as far as we know. So, South America, uh, father and mother are from Guyana. So, you're from I'm the French, French Guyana? No, British Guyana. British Guyana. Yeah, that's why we're really confused about the name. How did we get our French name? <laughs> they don't yeah, so, well, did you, did you research that or no? Research the family tree? Yes. So we had an uncle who was working on that um, and he passed, unfortunately. So oh, that hasn't been passed on yet to um, someone else to pick up the mantle, but I'd like to know, I'd like to find out soon. Okay, so what made you want to become an artist or is it somebody in your family or did, yeah, how did you become, how did you start? Sure, so both my parents are musical. So my father, he plays instruments, he's an organist. Um, he's very passionate about like, classical and more like church music. Um, and then my mom sang in a group, and I would tour around different places back when she was in Guyana. 
But um, when it comes to what I do right now, like doing jazz music and Afrobeat and um, even the classical, like operatic stuff, that's just from experience here as I was growing up in, um, in Toronto. I was in Flyers, um, the Bach Children's Chorus in Scarborough, East okay. of the City. And then I was in you know, school uh, ensembles, if you could reach it. And then I studied. I was debating whether to go to school for jazz music or for classical. And I figured I'd get a good foundation in classical and some jazz on the side. And that's what I ended up doing in um, the States. So that's kind of my trajectory. And then I started uh, reading my own opportunities in New Mexico. And I came back to Canada. And so you, went in, so you lived in Mexico? I lived in New Mexico. So New Mexico? Yeah, so in the Southwest, the United States. And um, where I lived, it was Santa Fe. So it was uh, pretty, I guess, pretty bilingual, but most English in the areas that I was in. So it was a very cool experience. Like, you know, green chili burritos in the morning, and like, <laughs> it was a very cool like, cultural experience. Yeah. And uh, my Spanish is too good, but it's not too bad either. Okay, so you speak Spanish, French, and English then? I do, I do. yeah, there's my language. Okay, so who ha who else have you performed with? I know you said you've perf you've performed with some other people, so who, who have you worked with, with your producers and performed? Sure, sure. So, so the way it is in jazz music, typically we're independent musicians, so we get to perform with whoever is available to, like we can hire them or we collaborate with each other. So in terms of like people that are known in the Canadian scene and performed alongside or um, for uh, with Joe Seeley, Rainy Lee, Neil Swainson, um, Robbie Botosh, uh, Stu Harrison, Adrian Ferenza, like it's it's a lot of really fantastic and talented Canadian um, musicians. And um, it opened when I was in the Nathaniel Beck Corral. We opened for um, some, like, some very famous classical singers, um, operatic singers. So it's so cool. Um, I would say some of the most exciting experiences include singing for the president of Guyana a couple of times now. Uh, oh, you sang your old, you sang, was it, what is it, his birthday or what was it? So no, these were occasions when he has come to Canada for uh, diplomatic missions. Okay. And um, so I would be one of the featured singers for the event for the like, anthem. Um, and then in a, a few years ago, I think it was maybe 2016 or 18. I was invited down by the High Commission of Canada and Diana to uh, do a performance for a Women's Day event, International Women's Day, that happens every year. And um, it's in this beautiful park. And the President and First Lady were invited to be part of that. So it's been very amazing to be able to, you know, sing for Heads of State. I think it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So if so, do you do you do collaborations with other people, or you just do? By I'm usually the, the the lead singer. I'm used, it's usually me and my musicians. Yeah, okay. I've worked with Alexis Morrow. We've collaborated and done some recording. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Eunice Kaisen, um, who is um, a current soul artist in Toronto. Yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. Okay, so in 2024, because it's a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, so are you interested in doing collaborations with others, or if you had the opportunity, which three would you pick to do something with? Did you say which three? Yeah. Oh. Ooh, I feel like that is a tricky question because uh, I haven't thought about it that much. Who would I choose? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Yeah. You have to think about it. Okay. Yeah. No, because today a lot of the artists, you know, they're doing that so they get the, you know, they get more out there and then they also, mm -hmm. you know, the royalties and 
stuff. So sometimes you pair yourself up or you go with somebody or in a, you you just you do jazz, which is Yeah, in my genre it's not as it's finally done, right? We have mm -hmm. it's more of a live beginning um thing as yes. opposed to recording. But so you know someone the instrument or you know, a saxophonist or some so you could probably yeah. mention somebody like that that would go with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I honestly yeah. I've had a I've lot of fun experiences, experiences. like um yeah. The people that I play with in my bands are typically people that I adore what they do. Like um, Jojo Callender, he's fantastic on saxophone. Um, Mario Casella on electric guitar. Um, Yoel Becker on the trombone. So like, I'm always just surrounded by incredible people. So that's, that's my situation. All right, so tell us about this um, Afro Jazz Cabernet that you have coming up. Cool. cool. So, so the um, Centre Canadien de la Famille, they put on different events throughout the year to kind of connect the French community um, in different parts of the GTA. So sometimes I think in Saga, I think they have something in Toronto, and um, something in Hamilton. So this cabaret is essentially an opportunity to like come together be French, he of African descent or like diaspora, and um, it's going to be food. Um, and the idea, the tagline is get ready to dance. So this is going to be music for the dancing, not just for sitting around and listening, which is what I typically would do with my jazz show. People are there and they're, you know, you know, relaxing, closing their eyes. But this is a totally different vibe. This is about getting up and moving. It's about um, just enjoying life and connecting with people as you're doing it. So, very cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that seems like it's a it's a cool event. So, those are the type mm -hmm. of events that you normally are sh showcased at. No, this is brand new. This is a new world for me. Um, this dance music and Afrobeat. That's what I have just moved into a new project, right? A new realm. So. Building the band was all about networking with my with my cohorts, and um, it's it's just a part of me that I've never actually expressed. I've enjoyed other people doing it, but I've never created in that place myself. So I finally said, okay, this is an opportunity to really dig into what makes my soul come alive, what makes me not able to sit still. I have to move. I have to dance. So I wrote these songs within the last two weeks, and they're going to be premiered at this cabaret. So it's like a really exciting, and this is the new project. So this is what I'll be um, performing. I'll also with jazz, completely different shows, completely different everything, vibe, different everything. So this is really exciting project for me. So can you tell us about any of the songs that's going to be premiered that you wrote? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's a song called Puppet on a String, and it features um, saxophone and trombone in the introduction. And it's just like, it gets me going. It just makes you want to like get up and move. Um, and it's about. So, what are you singing? What lyrics are you singing today? Yeah. yeah. Is the one you just did or? No, no, no. So that was just the hearing parts. But the, the lyrics, um, they're about, you know, a, a woman who asks for everything from a man, but gives very little, kind of man-eater kind of vibe. And it's like, be careful. You said it's a man-eater kind of thing? Man-eater. He eats man for breakfast. He for breakfast. Oh, okay. And so it's like, you have to make choices about who you let into your life. They might be beautiful. They might be handsome, whatever it is. But All right. And the other one is? So there's also um, Onyx. Um, onyx is, you know, like black, right? And so it's about the beauty of, um, of blackness. And the line says, I see your beauty, Onyx. Um, glowing like a star each and every day. No matter what they do or say, I see your beauty. I see your beauty on it. It's one of my favorite new songs coming up. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, well, we're going to get a little bit of your style. We'll let the people hear. Okay. It's take five, right? Take it. Take it. 
take, take it, it five. Yeah. yeah. So this so one this is, one is um, because, because, as you know, I live in New Mexico. Mexico. This song was inspired from um, just wanting to be encouraging to people and have a Latin jazz vibe to it. Okay. So we're going to hear it. You guys can go see the video after. So, you know, that way you can get up, get up your YouTube and stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. yes. Okay. Stream it. Run that up. Yes. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Ah, uh, good part. That's a, well, that's, that's really good. And the settings and stuff, it's just, you know, it's really, you know, theatrical. It's very jazzy. Jazzy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about this one here, um, uh, Love and Light. Okay. So Is that way back? <laughs> way back, so down. Um, so Love and Light is a song that is like ideal, perfect for this time of year. It's about, uh, it's, it, uh, literally the chorus says, this season is a time for love and light. Um, it's falling snow and uh, white twinkling lights. Um, you're hearing the, the trees in the night. It's just very much about the atmosphere of the winter time and getting close to the holidays. And it's uh, a really special song to me. It, the first time it was sung was um, by little children, like elementary school children. It was just so sweet. But you'll get the magical vibe of it. All right, well, let's go here. Love and light, Faith Elmer. Thank you. 
Well, that's beautiful. <laughs> and people, I encourage you to go see. I didn't show you the video because you got to go see it. It's really yeah. nice. It's yeah, very it's Christmassy, beautiful. holiday. Mm -hmm. So you get people to, to people watching that during that time, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what's up next for Faith? Oh, I know you say you got your two songs coming. What's going? What's what do you got? Look forward to. So I have a Christmas show. <laughs> I know those of you around the world might not be able to make it in person, um, but it's uh, Saturday, December twenty third. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting down and jazzy with some of those favorite Christmas carols and songs. And then in the new year, I'm going to be um, performing this Afro jazz um, set that I prepared for the cabaret. I'm going to be performing that at festivals. I'm really looking forward to um, giving a new experience in front of you know hundreds, of thousands of people, um, where I get to dance this for the whole time, as opposed to being very demure and very classy, and you know, um, being careful. Um, it's it's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm also going to be working on a new project of the kind of uh, modern jazz look, but a little bit dark and moody. I'm deciding, honestly, this is the year that I do all of the things and just you find the opportunities, accept and say yes, the year of yes, it's basically what's coming up. The year of yes with music, um, with people, um, just with myself, and I'm really excited about that. So if you want to know what's going on, you have to follow me. On socials, my website, faithinmoyjazz.com, and um, just see what's up and connect because I love connecting with new people and sharing this music with anyone I can. All right. So, are there any other shout outs that you want to give to your people? Yes. I want to shout out to everyone in Hamilton that will be at that After Jazz Cabaret. Um, the friends of mine that will be coming out. So, shout out to Melody. Taylor, Janelle, uh, shout out to Marilyn, Solomon. Um, musically, just a shout out to Lorraine Klassman, um, the opening for her, and she's like the South African, um, um, what music, township music queen of Canada. Um, just a shout out to everyone in Canada that'll be collaborating with this year, and the US too in the fall. Looking forward to seeing you all and anyone who wants to check out the music. I'm excited to get to know you too. <laughs> all right. Well, it's been a pleasure, uh, Faith. You Thank know, you're coming here telling us about your, you know, your journey and the jazz mm -hmm. and a lot of people, you know, it's a different genre of music and a lot of people do like um, jazz. But you know, yeah. we're talking up and close. You guys more express yourself when you're doing the music. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And a shout out to you. Thanks so much for the invitation and for having me on. It's been a great conversation. Okay. All right. So, you know, I I just want to tell everybody thank you for watching uh, tonight here with Faith Farber. You guys go stream the music, look at the music, because the artists don't get recognized if you guys don't, and pay for the music. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> So you can come on Bandcamp and pay for some real music. Is in hard copies. If you still believe in CDs, we have them for you. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. I do. I have a stock of them. And um, on Instagram, that's the place I'm most active. So at Faith of Your Classic Jazz. That A M O U R. You see it there on the screen. That's uh, the best way to stay connected. But thank you. All right. Will you guys reach out? So good night, everybody, and bye for now. Bye. Bye.